my back, boy. Please don't think it's sweet, I stay with the heat, even though I'm a sad boy. You better watch the way you breathe around me for the breath of your last boy. And it's finished. Looking down at the finished pirate flag he had just painted, Usopp looks proud of his creation, with Luffy and everyone being impressed. You just do everything, huh? You won't regret recruiting me, said Usopp. I'm a man of many talents. How about we put up the sail too, then, said Zoro. I was going to do the same thing, said Luffy. I mean, it'll take a while, but yeah, sure, I can do that. Don't worry, I can fly anyway, said Luffy. It'll be easy. Right. That still makes no sense to me, said Usopp. Doesn't need to, it just needs to work. Gathering all their efforts, they all help him paint the sail and are all tired after except for Luffy, who then tests Usopp, making him aim at a rock, which he surprisingly hits, even he's surprised, but just plays it off. But this makes Usopp the ship sniper as they retreat inside to talk. I'ma call you a sharpshooter. Next up, we need a cook, that and a musician. Or a doctor dummy, said Nami. Either one goes, said Luffy. I mean, sure, that's a good plan and all, but how will we even find a cook on these seas? asked Zoro. Just then, however, a ruckus is heard outside with everyone standing abruptly. Get the hell out of here, you bastards! Licking his lips, being intrigued, Luffy runs out, seeing over the rail an angry Johnny who points his blade towards Luffy. Get down here and fight me, he said. With these words, he jumps and slashes at Luffy, but is instantly blocked by a golden disc that pushes him back, just as Luffy leaps over the rail, smashing his face in with both of his legs. Don't touch Mary, she just joined the crew. With this massive blow, Johnny crashes to the floor as Luffy lands with the disc fading, while from inside, the cowardly Usopp and Nami wonder if the commotion is over. Zoro was just chilling the entire time and tells him to move over as he finally gets up and makes his way over with them, uh, with him then coming outside and seeing Luffy poking their enemy with a stick all over. Johnny? B Big bro Zoro? Oh, so you know each other, said Luffy. W would you stop poking me, please? I'm just trying to figure out what's so special about you that you thought you could hurt my ship. This guy holds grudges, thought Johnny. However, eventually everything is explained. Yosaku, uh, Johnny's partner, is brought on board and taken care of by Nami, who fed him fruit since he had developed scurvy. The same goes for Johnny, so they're doing a little bit better now. Now, standing shoulder to shoulder, the two bounty hunters introduce themselves properly. We're Brother Zoro's old bounty hunting partner, Sayosaku, as he took a puff from a cigarette. Dude, should you seriously be smoking right now? asked Usopp. Oh, I'm not that weak. <coughs> Spewing blood all over the place, he makes everyone freak out with Luffy yelling, Don't stay merry, damn it! Lie down and rest! That That's too harsh, brother Luffy, said Yosaku. As he's dragged to the side by Usopp, who lets him rest and tells him to stop doing that, like stop smoking, he stuffs his mouth with an orange, and Yosaku thanks him and everyone else will be talking with Johnny, inquiring about um, their need for a cook, and if he knew any way to somehow finish that goal. Oh, there's this restaurant on the seas called the, uh, it's the, um, the Baratier. Oh, seriously? asked Luffy. Set a course for Baratier, Nami. We don't know where that is, you idiot. They're about three days from here. I'd say, uh, north, said Yosaku. Set a course, Yosaku. Okay, if you don't mind, I mean, I'll guide you for sure. Yes, please, said Usopp and Nami, as obviously they have needed to eat some actual food. Oh, by the way, Brother Zoro, I heard even Mihawk goes there pretty often. As he whispered this in his ear, Zoro for the first time shows anxiousness and true excitement, which Luffy takes notice of, growing his smile. What, asked Zoro? Nothing. Just have fun. Thanks. So, after three days of traveling, they arrive, and Yosaku is much better, and Johnny is perfectly fine, and they see the Baratier. What you think? yells Johnny. Dude, it's like a seeking, said Luffy. All the Stray Hats are pretty surprised to see that there was an actual restaurant somewhere on the seas, but while they admire the view, in the corner of their eyes, they notice a marine ship approaching. Damn, when did they show up? says Nami. I hope they don't blast us or anything, said Usopp. I hope they do. Usopp and Nami then shout, don't say stuff like that. When near enough, Iron Fist full body, the captain shows himself. I'm Lieutenant Iron Fist full body. Who's your captain? Name yourself. As he perches over the edge of his ship, Luffy tips his hat. Monkey D. Luffy, you can call us the Straw Hat Pirates. Straw Hats, says Zoro. Yeah, I just came up with it. Like, just now. 
Looking him up and down, Iron Fist asks, Were you a noble of some kind? You don't seem to care about your life, do you? Taking off his hat, Luffy then shows his face, saying, I'm not a noble dude. Don't say that, it's creepy. But, but he totally looks like one. Yeah, he looks like a model, even? As Iron Fist's men comment on this, he gets pissed and his arrogant tone starts to show as he starts walking off, asking his men to just sink them. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, really? As he turns asking this, Luffy snaps his finger. Yeah, really. A golden light showers the marines as they look up and are left horrified, seeing massive amounts of swords falling from this massive, transparent, warbling golden gate, one of which drops a spear going right through their deck and then fading to particles. Still want to attack? asks Luffy. With a nervous smile, Iron Fist says, I have seemed to jump to conclusions. You just came to have a meal, right? Sure. As he snaps his fingers again, the gate disappears with Iron Fist whispering loudly to get the hell out of here, and they begin to go away as Luffy backflips over everyone, landing, saying, Let's go look for a cook. Brother Luffy, you really didn't eat a devil fruit, right? I have a devil fruit. I mean, you want one? Dropping from a gate and falling into his hands is now a devil fruit with everyone surrounding him and leering at it. You actually just have, like, anything in there? asked Johnny. I don't see what's so special about them, said Luffy, but if you want to eat it, this one turns you into a windman. As cool as that sounds, I want to be able to swim, said Usopp. Fair enough, let's just go eat. As he flies off the ship, Johnny then turns to Zoro. He's so cool. What are you telling me for? If I told him that he probably just have more of a pop to his ego, and I feel like he doesn't need more of that, arrogance can kill on these seas. I can hear you, yells Luffy. I'm invincible. No point in getting worried. No, I, I get your point, thought Usopp. And as they head in and take a seat, they are approached by a tall blonde man with a swirling brow. Would the lady let like to try any specials first, asked Sanji. Oh, I'll have the steak if you don't mind. I'll take the same things as Zoro and rice on the side. As they give their order, from the kitchen, Patty and the other cooks watch on nervous about Sanji attacking Luffy because he looked like a spoiled brat type. Damn, I could have gotten a good tip today, said Patty. Oh, come on, it'll be fine. Yeah, I think he's controlling himself a little bit better today. Now, as Sanji asks Luffy what he wants, he would then stand and look at the waiter very closely, freaking out Sanji who says, Yeah, you're way too close, sir. I know. Hey, you're a good cook, right? Sure, actually the best on the ship. Kicking down the door at that moment, Zev says, repeat that again. You old geezer, I'm taking an order here. The customers, though very few of them, wonder if a fight is about to go down, and Zev asks what Luffy's deal is. What is a pirate doing in my restaurant? He's a pirate? He doesn't look like one at all. Some look outside, seeing his ship and the straw had drawn on it, so it connects and it actually makes sense, but Luffy says, I want to cook. Then take him, I don't care. What? How could you just say that? says Sanji. What are you even doing here aside from trying to flirt and occasionally making something decent every now and then? But usually it tastes like complete crap anyway. Are these guys seriously cooks? asks Usopp. At this point, however, in then walks a new customer who Patty quickly gets to attending as he puts on a business smile, rubbing his hands together and showing him a chair to slide into. So what will you be having today? Bring me anything. Oh, and where is your method of payment, might I ask? Gin, now showing a serious face, has to bring him food, which Patty tells him to get out, closing in his, uh, you know, business smile, not being the cherry type anymore, but then he instantly finds a gun at his head. Can you handle the consequences of kicking me out? asks Gin. However, easily swatting this away, the cook slams and crashes into the floor with his bare hands. Get the hell out. Cheering for Patty, the customers and chefs are relieved things got taken care of, before Gin is then thrown out and is left um, outside by the, just on the outside of the deck, only bleeding more than before, which he was trying to hide to look a little bit tough. And at this point, Sanji excuses himself from talking to Zeph and arguing with him, telling Patty to get the straw ass order. Don't tell me twice, I mean, I'm getting my money. He instantly gets over there with Zeph then telling Luffy to follow him. Let's talk. Sure. He gets up and starts following him, and when he sees Sanji sneaking out food outside, he realizes who it's for. You're definitely going to become my cook, he thought. Outside, Gin eats up all the food that he was given with tears in his eyes, thanking Sanji. Meanwhile, Luffy tosses to Zeph, asking, Hey, can I take curly brows with me? You think I'm just going to hand him over? I mean, I thought you wanted me to... You just wanted to piss him off, didn't you? 
As Zeph scoffs, Luffy holds in a laugh, with the old man telling him to shut up. What's your deal? Oh, me? I'm gonna be king of the pirates, so I need the best of the best. This takes the chef by surprise as he begins to laugh and laugh into the air like a madman, with Luffy just following him and doing the same thing until they both stopped, and Zeph looked right at him, into his eyes. Something about him was just different, he couldn't put his finger on it. If you can convince him to go, then go right ahead and take him, kid. So what are you, noble turned pirate? Why does everyone always say that? I was never a noble, just like I never ate a devil fruit. Anyway, bye. He would then quickly run out of there and head down to the dining room and running by his crew, he takes out a sack of gold bars that he then slams on the table. Gotta go look for a cook, uh, use that to pay, no stealing Nami. Is that, are those gold bars? He just casually pulled them out. Pirates and nobles, well, kind of nobles present, people who are fancy I guess, are shocked at the money he's just throwing around with Usopp saying, how's about we have a buffet? Can we seriously just use that? asked Johnny. Money means nothing to that guy, says Zara. You get used to it. As he makes his way outside, Luffy stumbles upon Gin and Sanji talking. Hey you, join my crew. Huh? Uh, no, I don't know you, says Sanji. Also, I have a reason to stay here. Well, what is it? I'm not telling you. God, you're worse than Nami. Well, you'll join me soon enough, anyway. This pisses off Sanji, who takes notice of Luffy's attire, and that combined with his attitude makes him think, a spoiled rich kid just flaunting his money. You just insulted me in your head, didn't you? How did... Whatever. Hey, kid, you're a new pirate to the seas, right? Asked Gin. Yeah. For what reason? I'm gonna be king of the pirates. This shocks the two, as Gin then warns them, saying to not go to the Grand Line. It's a place full of monsters. My crew barely escaped. It still scares me just thinking about it. Well, I'm not as weak as you are, you know. These words hurt the pirate, piercing him like an arrow, who said that, uh, that mouth will get him in trouble. Oh, trust me, it has, but this time I can handle it. Don't worry about me. I got it all planned out. Well, I still gotta warn you. Honor must pirates, right? He would then stand asking Sanji what he owed him, and Sanji in silence grabs his plate and throws it overboard as it splashes into the endless sea. No evidence, no pay. As the cook smiles, Gin's eyes fill with tears as he would thank the man, and now Luffy just needed to have him because he was a good guy and a good cook. Gin then uses the small dinghy that he came here with to leave, with not only Luffy and Sanji be on side. You have a dream, Sanji? asks Luffy. What's that got to do with anything? A man without a dream is just hollow. Also, humor me. Today you met a man who wants to become king of the pirates. What could be crazier than that, right? As he takes a moment, Sanji asks, You ever heard of the All Blue? As he is taken back by these words, Luffy remembers the words of an old mentor ringing in his ears as he grows a wide smile. We're gonna get along just fine. Wait, so you actually believe it exists? Why can't it? I'm willing to believe anything. I mean, just because no one found it yet doesn't mean that it's not anywhere to be found. These words mirrored that of Zef to Sanji. And just like that, they start to get along. They talk so much that Patty ends up screaming at Sanji for lazing around. And as the day continues after this, like usual, Sanji ends up getting in an argument with Zeph in front of everybody. But while the tension rises between the two, someone takes notice of something outside, that being a cook, who then barges into the dining room. Boss? What? asks Zeph. I might be going crazy, but I think I just saw the Kree pirate ship heading over. In horror and fear, customers look out the window to see a massive ship heading their way. It's really them. We're, we're gonna die. Wait, wait, doesn't it look a bit wrecked though? Yeah, now that you mention it. They take notice of the ship being ravaged and it makes them feel a little bit better because maybe they're weakened. And soon Krieg then arrives being supported by Gin. Please, can you give us some food? Hell no, get out of here. Running out of the kitchen, all the cooks leave their stations and are armed with weapons. The customers panic as Krieg is, of course, one of the most dangerous people alive, but the captain, in surprise to all of them, gets on all fours begging for a meal. Please, I'll even pay you. He takes out a sack of berry that he slams down, but the cooks aren't budging, so Gin has to try for him as well, but Sanji begins to walk back to the kitchen, catching everyone's attention. Where the hell are you going? Help us kill this bastard already. Not listening to them, he then soon came back out with a massive plate of rice and he lays it before the man and even hands him a fork. Here, eat. What are you doing? Shut up, I'll feed who I want to, yells Sanji. 
This is the same man who caused horrors and killed millions, and you just gave him a meal. Shut up. As Zeph surprisingly stands up for Sanji saying this, he says they have no idea what it's like to spend days on the sea hungry and with no rescue in sight. Even be, but boss, fine. As he digs in, Nami sighs saying, I'm surrounded by idiots. Your brother Luffy, what are we gonna do now? Asked Yosaku. We wait, he said. Something funny is about to happen. As he gorges himself, everyone simply watches on in horror because he might explode until he's done, and Sanji kneels to him, asking if he was satisfied. Oh, very. Thank you. However, out of nowhere, he lunges forward, swinging his arms as gas would fill the room, only for it to be restrained by a chain. As he looks to his left, he sees a golden gate releasing this. What the? He's then kicked down by Sanji in the head as he crashes to the ground and is then grabbed by his other arm with another chain as he's then held up in the sky. Hey, whoever's doing this, let's talk, okay? Walking out, however, Luffy says, I only do business with people I actually find interesting. You, sir, are boring. As he holds his hand out, the chains tighten as he screams with Sanji nervously saying, How are you doing that? Just join my crew. You'll find out. I'm not that desperate. As Luffy is disappointed, the chefs and people cheer in happiness with the tyrant having shown his true colors and being punished for it. But Gin would then run to and put a gun to Zoro's head. Release him, Luffy, or I kill him. He's part of your crew, isn't he? However, as he looks around the table, even Usopp isn't scared as Zoro smirks. May I? You may, said Luffy. With this command, Gin's gun is disarmed from him by the swordsman, who then kicks him in the back of his legs, bringing him to his knees, where his throat is met by Zoro's blade but just barely even touches it, because obviously he can't just kill him yet. No one can just beat, beat Bro Zoro with that kind of amateur movement, are you stupid, said Johnny. As he walks up to Don Kree at this moment, Luffy then kept a smile, until he didn't, and showed a murderous gaze. You've done your due diligence as a cook, so what now? As he takes a puff from his cigarette, Sanji says that he's fed him, but now that he's bit the hand that feeds him, he will have no problem killing Krieg which angers the pirate as he struggles to get free and actually break himself out, falling down as he raises both arms to slam towards Luffy. However, moving on instinct, Sanji spins, bringing a roundhouse kick to his chin, Zoro dashes, slashing at his back, and Luffy strikes at his stomach. Krieg's brain wobbles from the cook's kick right as he then feels a sting from the cut of Zoro, but most importantly, the impact of Luffy's punch spreads, echoing something shattering. As his coat is blown off by wind pressure, his armor of gold turns to shambles, allowing Luffy to dig in a punch, blowing him out of the restaurant as he crashes into the sea, causing a massive wave to rise. He, he was wearing gold armor, and he broke it with a punch. As Sanji lands, Buffy and Zoro take notice of the gold pieces on the ground and look outside, seeing Krieg floating in the sea, spewing blood from his mouth. This man, he's one of those types, thought Zeph. Those chains can bind gods. I let you go. Oh, right. He's out cold. Well, good job, guys. No one even clapped, only being in awe of his power as Luffy and Zoro then sat back down. And Zoro takes a look at the broken Gin. Get up. Luffy isn't that harsh, said Zoro. Gin, who was afraid to even move, stands staggered as people begin to rush out, thinking the cooks for the meal. But obviously, unless they want to get caught up in something else, they need to get the hell out of here. However, as they get on with their ships and begin to rule for their lives, a massive wave of water splashes and washes against them. Their faint screams quickly reach our ragtag group of friends in the Baratier who run to the balcony and the chefs do the same and see the ship of Don Krieg was split apart and slowly but surely something makes its way through. Zoro then leaps off the balcony, landing at the bottom deck. Hey Zoro, what's wrong? Has this up. Oh, this is going to be fun, said Luffy. What's that supposed to mean? I feel like that's not a good thing, said Nami. Luffy only smiles, which puts them on edge, but Zoro, honestly, it's just an instinct for him. He unsheaths his blades instantly. Dracul Mihawk, said Zeph. What's with these people showing up at my door? As he hangs his head, sailing uh, towards the Baratia, the swordsman looks up, feeling something he felt he shouldn't ignore, and he sees Luffy smiling at him. That boy. What is he? Hey, you're the strongest swordsman, right? Mihawk then looks to Zoro, who points his blade at him, and he sighs, standing. Such titles do not matter to me. Are you trying to die early? With a nervous sweat, Zoro smiles, putting his third sword in his mouth. I'm not afraid of death. 
then you're a fool. Though maybe that's not such a bad thing. At this point is when Zeph actually tells everyone about how strong Mihawk is and Sanji yells at Luffy to do something. I made a promise to Zoro. If I ever got in the way of his dream, I would stab myself in the gut with one of his swords. Isn't that a bit extreme, asked Nami. Well, I'm not playing pirate, Nami. I'm not doing anything. I'll jump in when he loses. So you know he's dead and you're still not going to do anything, said Patty? I never said that. But who would expect to beat the strongest swordsman in the world? Mihawk, with lightning fast movement, appears behind Zoro, who turns with all his blades to strike, only to be knocked back and finding he had only been knocked back by a kitchen knife. This only leaves him and everyone more baffled as Mihawk apologizes. I couldn't find a smaller one. Is this how you treat your people, boy? As he looks up to Luffy, his stare makes everyone back up as Luffy says, You should pay attention to my first mate, you know. Zoro, with a shout, attacks and swings with all his might, using all his techniques, yet it does nothing. <sighs> God, the world is wide, he said. Yes, you're nothing but a frog in a well. Croak, croak, croak. Give up. I thought this would be more fun, honestly. This angers Zoro, but he holds his blades out, beginning to run forward and spinning them. And in that one moment, his gaze, his spirit, it exudes something that takes me out by surprise. And as they clash, Zoro slides behind the swordsman, and everyone watches on scared. A massive cut explodes from his body as his two-handed blades shatter, yet they all only watch, because they can only watch as Zoro rises again and turns to Mihawk with his arms held out. What are you doing? Cut on a swordsman back, or a disgrace. These words left the man astonished as he reached and brought out Yoru, asking for his name with a smile. Yoru no Zoro. Magnificent. I'll cut you down with the strongest sword, as you wish. Moving in, he slashes and cuts Zoro wide open, leaving him grinding his teeth in pain as he falls, and quickly Luffy leaps off the balcony and floats down. You did good. Zoro, no! Big Bro Zoro, is he alive? The others make their way down as Mihawk keeps a stare on Luffy. Patch him up. As they nod and get to it, Luffy turns to face Mihawk. Got something you want to say? As they keep their gaze on each other, Mihawk asks where he got the hat from. Oh, Shanks, he told me about you a bit, but I guess he doesn't spar you anymore. Mm. Even for him, that was petty, but this, this is way worse. Swinging his blade and stopping it right at Luffy's nose, Mihawk startles everyone. Would you like to fill the hole in my heart then? Luffy, don't do this right now, yells Nami. Lu Luffy... Hearing Zoro, Luffy listens as he then thanks him for letting him have this, this fight, of course. I promise, for as long as I live, I'll never lose again until I kick his ass. Is that okay with you, King of the Pirates? As he raises his blade, Luffy smiles. You better keep your word, Zoro. Miyak would then pull back his Yoru, and he says that in that case, he'll be waiting for Zoro. I... Dracula Mihawk, acknowledge you as worthy. Until we fight again, your sword will not falter to another. As he turns, Luffy says, isn't that great? He sees you as a rival. That's why he didn't interfere, thought Usopp. This is my captain. Mihawk then jumps back to his little boat and sails off, saying maybe he and Luffy can fight one day. I never thought I'd meet two conquerors in the East Blue. He then slowly leaves and Zoro is patched up when Luffy then kneels down summoning from his gate a stone book out of which runes flow out attaching to Zoro and melding into his skin. The spell increases the body's regenerative. Well, yeah, basically it just heals you. You'll be good in a week as long as you persevere. Why the hell didn't you tell us you had something like that? Yells Nami. Doesn't matter. When I give order, you listen. You already took my money. How about you take my commands? Feeling a sense of guilt at getting so much from him, Nami freezes, saying, You're so cruel, you know that. As he stands, he then reaches a hand out to Zoro, who grabs it, standing and already feeling himself getting better, and even if it is slow, it still counts, and he tells Zoro to go rest. I'll give you that sword, plus an extra one. This relights Zoro's passion, and his sense of losing doesn't even matter anymore, because obviously the swords were pretty, you know, important to his fighting style, and it got him pretty down. But now he's better, and Luffy has Usaku and Johnny taken back to the ship, whilst Usopp would join them as well. You're staying? asked Luffy as he 
looked to the skies and took off, and Nami replied back, I have something to talk about with you. Seeing how serious she was for once, Luffy says sure, but first he wants to ask Sanji something. I'm not coming with you. I didn't even ask you yet. What if Nami asks you, he asks. No. Man, you're really serious, huh, said Luffy. Take him. Wait, what? This again, old man? He looks to Zephu, then say, You're really getting on my nerves, brat. You're cooking tastes like ass. Screw off already. You're getting on my nerves. That's really how you feel, huh? I just picked you up like a piece of scrap in the sea. But you're worse than scrap. You just don't know when to give up. That's right, you shitty old man. But I'm going to surpass your cooking. As he walks off, seething, Luffy looks to see if he's gone and leans back while in the air, as if sitting on it, smiling. You're pretty harsh, huh? I mean, anyone could tell you the definition of tough love, but that's a bit much. I meant every word of it, said Zeph. Yeah, the idiot's gonna... He's gonna rot away in a place like this. He needs to go and have adventures instead of dying with a bunch of old men like us, said the cooks. I ain't old, said Patty. Regardless, seeing his annoying face here pisses me off. Take him, Straw Hat, or whatever your name is. You seem pretty alright, honestly. I mean, you just met me today. But also, if he doesn't want to come, I won't force Sanji. It's just kind of a shame. Can I get one last meal, though? I won't get food like this for a while. <sighs> just take this back. With a grunt, he holds over a sack of gold bars. As the cooks would ask what he's doing, that's a fortune you're giving away, boss. Come on. Shut up, damn it. Getting morbid, they all hang their heads and start heading back in. As Luffy would then laugh, and um, he flies forward and grabs it, dropping it into a gate. I have a few things on my mind, and uh, you wouldn't mind if I just spew my heart out to you, right? I'm really hungry. Shoot. I'll personally take your order. And so Zeph takes his orders, and it's a lot. So he's forced to take time for it, so he has to take money for it. So eventually he ended up getting the gold bars anyway. And because Luffy honestly doesn't have a cook yet, it has more value. So that's why he honestly just said, take them. All right, just take them. And he just couldn't win with Luffy because Luffy is, as you've kind of seen, not the same Luffy. And then after everything, Luffy would then drop the plates into his gate, thanking everyone in the dining room with a bow. And this is when he hears, hey, Luffy. He turns and sees Sanji, who says that he will go with him. We both have foolish dreams. Might as well chase mine. So, you got yourself a cook. Told you he said yes. Don't ruin the moment, damn it. I'll get my stuff. As he walks off, Patty says good riddance, but Sanji says they have horrible acting. You really want to piss me off that badly just to get out of here, don't you, geezer? Fine. Enjoy the rest of your crappy life. He gets his stuff and... A bit of time passes as the cooks would watch him leave as he heads to Luffy's ship and the captain sits atop Mary's head ready to welcome him. The cooks are silent however but as he reaches the ship Sanji hears these words. Hey Sanji, you keep your feet dry. Freezing in his trash Sanji begins to shiver as tears flow out. Dropping to his knees and hands he bows to the chef who had taken care of them his entire life basically at this point. I owe you my life, you geezer. Letting me live under your roof all this time. Get the hell up. As he raises his head a little bit angry, because obviously he's not taking his gratitude, Sanji also finds that Zeph and everyone are as teary-eyed as he is, and they say that they will miss him as well. And as he says goodbye with the straw hats, Sanji watches until the Baratia is out of sight, and he shouts, I'll never forget you, Zeph. You just gonna stand there, asked Luffy. As he turns, Sanji finds Luffy slammed down a jug of alcohol with barrels all around. Let's drink. You're a cook now, so we'll be making the food for all of this stuff to go with it. No problem, right? No problem. I did sign up for that. Welcome to the group, said Nami. And thank you so much, Nami Swan. As if adapting another personality instantly, the cool, calm headed, flirtatious cook was exchanged for a complete simp. And Nami says, hmm, I like the new you. A toast to Sanji, said Usopp. Raising all their cups, they shout at the top of their lungs and drink down everything they have before slamming it down. And Sanji is now the cook of the future Pirate King. 
a cook of the straw hats and the going merry all right guys announcement time we're gonna pay a special visit to nami's hometown wait really said usap well i gotta see this well it's less of a vacation and more of a mission we're gonna take back orange town with extra interest he shows a much more serious demeanor and so they do the same did some bastard make nami cry asked sanji you help me protect my home nami so i will hesitate to do the same for you said usap Zoro stays silent, but he's on board, and the bounty hunters are as well, and it brings a smile to Nami's face, a nervous one, and we have a flashback to see Luffy talking with Nami alone as she asks him, would you come to Orange Town and come on, you know, you want to say it, with a look of embarrassment, she finishes her sentence, and, and help me, man, I'm kind of hurt, how low do you think of me, this isn't a joke, okay, people's lives are at stake, I'm pouring my heart out here, I'm being serious too. I'm your friend, Nami. I'm also your boss. And by your standards, I say you've earned your place on this crew. He takes his hat off and puts it on her head, which surprises her, having been told by him that it is something he truly considers a treasure above everything she has. And she begins to cry. Thank you, Luffy. Luffy answers with a smile, and as we return to present time, and now fully confident, Nami with her friend says, Let's go rob them for everything they got. Hell yeah, never seen you so motivated before. Not that we, you know, know who they are, but yeah. The crew's bond having grown closer already, they take a trip to Orange Town with their ship approaching Arlong Park. And making its way towards the pool using the open path, they pass by a marine ship. Nezumi obviously notices them but says nothing as he's already been paid off by Arlong, so this is none of his business. Those guys must have a death wish or something thought the captain as soon as they actually enter arlong park along chu and kurubi they all get on guard and then nami uh, nami heard arlong say ah oh, welcome back he stands making his way over and closer to the ship and as it stops nami stays quiet only meeting his hello with a gaze of pure hatred or you arlong is directed to the skies looking at the sails and atop it sat someone who then leapt off and free fell until he came to a stop floating and landing in on Nami's shoulders like a child. Did you hurt my navigator? Get off me, you idiot. Yeah, you ruined our entrance, said everyone. Come on. As they showed themselves, Arlong bursts into laughter. <laughs> okay, this this has to be some kind of joke, right? I mean, you really fooled these idiots big time, didn't you? Hey. Now being before Arlong and upside down, Luffy stares him in the eyes. Only my friends get to call me that. What will happen to the Arlong group and Orange Town? How will the Straw Hats fare at Loke Town? Find out in the next part of One Piece. That's all for me. I'm gone. Peace. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead. Everything you know that you could get Don't let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget